We are nearing the close of this discussion. I guess towards uh, the end, uh, a good uh, thing would be uh, the presentation of our colleague, Mr. John Jung, who will uh, speak on his vision of Moscow as a smart city in the system of coordinates of smart economy, which has to include both mobility of the population and efficient uh, use of resources, as well as level of education and living standards. So we'd like to uh, hear, John, your insights and your opinion as to how Moscow of today fits into the system of coordinates for smart cities. Well, thank you very much. And if I could get the uh, presentation together. Um, the Intelligent Community Forum, I'm going to be very brief, I hope. Uh, I know a lot of people here are interested in having a break. So uh, let me explain very quickly. The Intelligent Community Forum, we're a think tank and we bring together uh, over 100 cities around the world, uh, many of them uh, sizes of uh, cities like Moscow, but also cities as small as 5,000 population, but as, again, uh, even as large as uh, Chongqing, China at 33 million people. So it's quite a range of cities. Uh, we uh, look at it from not only the technical points of view, but uh, many of the social and cultural uh, and economic points of view. So let me uh, take you through this presentation very quickly. And uh, I'm going to be as brief as I can. So if anybody's interested in any particular detail, be happy to give them a copy of this presentation or speak with you afterwards. So uh, we're talking about globalization. Thank you for a little talk about globalization earlier. Uh, but what this does is creates huge competition, huge competition for investment attraction as well as the attraction of talent and the retention of that talent. Everybody wants to prosper in their communities, so that competition is going to be very active, particularly at the labor arbitrage end. Uh, but intelligent communities are those, like what you've referred to as smart cities, and if you want to be a smart city in Moscow, you have to undertake uh, a review. And one of those reviews is what I'm going to be talking about here through benchmarking. I'm going to talk about 12 cities with 12 traits that uh, represent these intelligent communities. And these intelligent communities do more than just talk about uh, being uh, connected by fiber optics and wireless. It's about a lot of other different things. So let me uh, take you through those. First of all, you have to have great infrastructure in your community. Everything from roads to rail to seaports, airports, but the new form is broadband. You have to have great infrastructure, but you have to have great education, innovation, creativity, the work that you've hear, heard today around collaboration and leadership, good governance, good regulations. Architecture and urban design in smart cities is very important, but also the culture and diversity, the attraction of risk capital, the digital inclusion, which I'll talk about very briefly, uh, sustainability, health and safety, and finally, how do you market and advocate these uh, intelligent communities in your community and abroad is very important. I picked uh, 12 cities. I could have picked a different set of 12 cities out of about 120 cities that we have recognized now as smart communities, but these have some relevant points that I just wanted to share with you. First of all, from a point of view of infrastructure, Chattanooga, Tennessee, not that large, not, not uh, the Moscow size, but a very important city from the point of view, they had some real issues. They had a crisis. They had very bad air, the worst air in the United States. And they were able to pull their community together and vision what uh, that city was to be like. So they used that planning process of visioning to not only clean the air, but used it to create a better city. They're better uh, uh, waterfront, riverfront areas, and so forth. They then turned to the infrastructure of broadband and built a smart grid. They created the biggest gigabyte environment for people to uh, use in their community. And as a result, that has created huge investment attraction for their community. They were able to bring in Volkswagen as a new uh, automotive plant, which normally would not have gone to the south. Uh, would have probably have let, uh, wound up in Ohio or Michigan. Uh, they also were able to attract distribution centers, health centers. Uh, they even competed and won from an Atlanta group, uh, the um, uh, Sim Center. 
and a lot of uh, SMEs as well as a lot of students who, uh, by the way, stay in that community because of all the job opportunities. Uh, speaking of students, universities are extremely important and I'm glad to hear here this morning about the importance of education in this community and not just regular education but very specific education because what happens is you can have a lot of companies go without uh, the kind of skilled workforce and they will then move to another place to find that skilled workforce. Here's a community called Waterloo, Ontario. Half a million people, not very large, but pushes above its weight. Very diverse, collaborative. It's called an entrepreneurial and an innovation center. It's the Silicon Valley of uh, Canada. Basically, this is where BlackBerry comes from and many uh, other high-end companies are located there. One of the reasons for it, the universities. And why, is these, why are these universities very important? Because they have a unique intellectual property protocol. You create it, you invent it, you innovate it, while well, you own it. And this has really attracted a lot of professors and a lot of students. Uh, they have a co-op system and they've also attracted over 150 think tanks to that community. One of them is a think tank that Stephen Hawking is looking at in terms of uh, uh, the cosmos, quantum computing and nanotechnology. And this is a little town. Now imagine what you can do with a larger city, a larger metropolitan region like Moscow. So, you have to be able to uh, attract innovation and creativity in your community. How do you do that? Well, if you've got great infrastructure and you've got great uh, skilled workforce, well, now you have to create and nurture that environment, that ecosystem that's able to create and attract the kind of in innovation and creativity that will help your community prosper. Texas is, uh, has a one that's called Austin. Austin is basically uh, surrounded by huge conservatism of, of the rest of Texas. They call themselves the blueberries surrounded by red tomato sauce. They love to call themselves a weird city. Uh, they want to be different. They want to be liberal. Well, why? Because that has attracted a lot of students and a lot of musicians and others, the bohemian types, that create a lot of new things. Twitter came from uh, a South by Southwest festival. This is a incubator, this is a catalyst, a crucible for bringing a lot of people together all in one location. And these students that work together with the musicians and everyone else, they create a lot of uh, opportunities in that environment. And that's the kind of uh, nurturing that that city has uh, undertaken. Uh, building collaboration and leadership, very quickly, a place called uh, Brainport in Holland. Eindhoven. Uh, they lost a huge company uh, to, uh, to Amsterdam. Philips moved to uh, their headquarters to Amsterdam and left a big hole in their community. Well, what they did was they turned that around through leadership and collaboration. Uh, they were able to uh, uh, build an open innovation center uh, utilizing some of the facilities that were left with, uh, uh, with Philips and as a result uh, created this organization called Brainport that helps companies to succeed in the area, one of the ideas that was talked about earlier. And that has created 55,000 jobs for this little community. Imagine again what you can do with a much larger uh, region. Effective and stable governance. I can't uh, speak enough about this because unless you have great trust and great confidence in your regulatory systems, if you have the ability to attract people to come you, you have achieved something that uh, uh, is very important for yourselves. Stockholm, Sweden had a, a problem with uh, their issue of, of broadband, for instance. Uh, uh, they only had one monopoly that didn't attract uh, uh, many investors. They were able to build through Stokab a fiber optic system uh, that uh, was open access broadband network and as a result it created confidence in the, uh, um, in the community and it's brought a lot of investors. Um, as an architect and planner, I'm very conscious of uh, what cities are able to do in terms of uh, architecture, urban design, creating very beautiful cities. You heard a, a wonderful presentation about what you're going to be doing here in Moscow. Particularly, I was uh, uh, enthused about seeing your waterfront edge uh, uh, improvements. These are very important. In uh, Singapore, there are... Um, 
a lot of new buildings being built, waterfronts, urban design, green buildings, and that is attracting a lot of investment uh, to their community. And I, I think with the kinds of improvements that I've heard the, this afternoon, uh, you should be able to see uh, significant investment attraction as well. Uh, you have to also think about some other things besides technology. You have to think about how you deal with your culture and the diversity, the people that you attract to create that diversity. Uh, I heard today that uh, this area is the second most uh, attractive location to bring in immigrants from around the world. Well, that helps in terms of uh, diversifying uh, your restaurants, uh, different trends, validating new kinds of systems and so forth, but uh, also in terms of uh, the kind of culture that is attractive. Uh, if you can uh, benefit from the kinds of theater that you have here, uh, in the case of Stratford, Ontario, a small community, but a great example. Here's a community that took uh, its agricultural roots, created a theater community, but it was only seasonal. They looked at how to create a year-round community, and as a result, they've attracted a university, uh, year-round the theatrical and staging um, expertise, and now is one of the world's leading Shakespeare uh, festivals. Attracting risk capital. Big cities can attract risk capital, like Hong Kong. It has a great uh, history of being able to attract venture capital. However, um, sometimes you have to specialize, and in one of these cases in, in Hong Kong, there's a place called Cyberport. I would recommend you take a look at what they've done with Cyberport in Hong Kong. It has taken uh, and focused on the digital media environment and created a multimedia complex that has attracted the Microsofts, the, the, the Cisco's and others. But more importantly, it's created an incubation capability by bringing people from all over the world to their soft landing pad and help the SMEs grow and prosper, and that has attracted investment as well. Uh, promoting digital inclusion. If everyone can have access to affordable uh, high-speed broadband, you can create and innovate and do a lot of different things, and it doesn't matter where you come from. Well, in the case of uh, Rio de Janeiro, that's really the story of the rich and the poor. And some people there have virtually no education, but have great imaginations and have been able to pull together uh, through what is known as these knowledge centers or knowledge squares, the ability for everybody to participate in uh, the digital environment. That is bringing investment to the community. Those people are going to be the ones that are going to be helping out in terms of the Olympics and uh, World Cup. Uh, they are otherwise not going to be able to succeed. Uh, stability and, uh, and, and, su and sustainability. Uh, here's a place, Toronto, Ontario went through a similar kind of process of amalgamation. They were about 700,000 population and now are 2.5 million, but their greater Toronto area is about 6 million people. Lots of different issues. Uh, you'll be going through the same sort of thing once you amalgamate the whole area. Uh, there's a lot of duplication and, and so forth, but they've now created their, uh, a system f to solve a lot of their transportation issues. Uh, Metrolinx has come in and uh, it's for the first time pulling together the community and creating a proper transportation system after 25 years. Uh, along their waterfront, uh, they have this huge sustainability uh, program where they're leading with their transportation, leading with green buildings, leading with uh, 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 new uses that then will expand out to the whole region. Uh, Dublin, Ohio is part of the Columbus area and they've been able to take their uh, high-speed broadband, their smart community exercises and extend it beyond uh, this little area called Dublin. They created a technology called Dublink and through Dublink high-speed broadband it has attracted a significant number of multinational corporations. But what it's done also in the health and safety area, it has attracted a lot of security companies as well as helped in terms of the health systems there to become entirely paperless, becoming a model for other places. And finally, Riverside, California. It has won this year's Intelligent Community of the Year Award by developing some of the best marketing and advocacy programs. Ten years ago, this was just a suburb uh, of Los Angeles. And in fact, it was in crisis. Most of the people, a lot of people there, had difficulties finding jobs, Many of them uh, were illiterate, and uh, they've turned that around by creating programs to train uh, many of their population. 
Uh, once they've been trained with computers, they've actually been given these computers. So they have a whole system of becoming a smart community as a result of that. They turned their city around in a decade, and I applaud them for that. Um, so these are just very quickly 12 principles, 12 traits of a smart community. If uh, Moscow is to be one, uh, I would urge Moscow to, to apply. We have five key principles that we ad adhere to when we're testing these cities. You've heard of ISO standards. You've heard of green uh, lead generated buildings. Well, this is the same kind of test for cities. And after you've looked at these five key principles, this is the kind of application that we think Moscow should go through. Uh, we now have over 120 cities that we've identified and worked with. We work very closely with all of these cities around the world. Look forward to uh, Moscow and the Federation of uh, uh, various municipalities in, in Russia coming together and being part of this particular family. We pick 21 a year. We work with seven out of those 21. We uh, uh, invite them to Honolulu, Hawaii. Somebody has to go for that. Uh, and we work with those. One of the cities I think you should take a look at in, in your comparisons is Ulu, Finland. Ulu's got a lot of uh, things that can teach you in, in terms of its uh, amalgamation exercises. And uh, uh, we are uh, happy to, uh, uh, to receive an application from Moscow to become an intelligent community. We uh, look forward to it. Thank you very much.